and correcting ourselves, knowing we have to correct ourselves. And the main reason why we correct ourselves is because we see love being taken away from us, leaving us. We see the energy leaving. We want it back. It's interesting because in all the, <coughs> that's funny, investigation that we've been doing is discovering how we've talked, you've talked about your three-year-old, well my three-year-old has come out to play and actually um, let herself be revealed that often is in charge and and it discovering that when I cough and when I can't speak and when I'm having my lung issues um, which really aren't pronounced but they're present it's that three-year-old and wanting to express and and the biggest thing was not feeling I didn't feel parented it's not that I wasn't parented <laughs> no mom's I, great I love her uh, because I had parents that, I that parents <laughs> you know I was provided for and everything like that it's that I didn't feel parented, and that's the big difference. Well, the main uh, issue that we discovered, again, it's not blaming the parents, but the main issue you discovered that your soul projected in front of you is that when something bad happens, you turn to your parent and you are, your, your soul is asking, I don't know how to process that. Hey, you're a big person. Help me out. And you didn't feel that that was... The answers weren't there. I, di I didn't. You didn't feel like you got the answer that you and needed. And that's probably, when I say I didn't feel parented, that's most likely the root issue is that when I something happened and I needed help, I didn't feel like I had that help. And where do we come up with these answers of not feeling parented? Well, there's a billion words. Who knows how many endless words you can have. So we created a chart, and then we have books and stuff that represent life. And what spirit chose was certain words. Uh, so when you look at it, it doesn't have to say, oh, I blame my parents. You have to do some spiritual investigation. In this case, that what came up is she didn't feel parented. And she's like, mm, I don't know, I felt parented. And I says, well, that's, they're not telling us directly. So that means we have to now find the clue. And so, which means once we start finding the deeper meaning, I, like it took two and a half hours to get me to say the word self, um, contrary. Because I didn't have the word contrary anywhere and in any of your definitions or sheets yeah. or anything that we looked at. And they said, look at the word self. Okay, but nothing else on the word list. But we had to go through that story, mm -hmm. unwind the whole thing. And to then get it led to, to the word. word paradox, which then gave me the, the word that they were looking for, which was contrary. contrary. Right. So it's, for me, I love spiritual investigation. I love to do all that. And, and so does Jen. So it's important. Now, um, thank you, Octrine, for all that in the inbox. Let's look at all uh, the other definitions that she found. Alrighty. And again, it's about okay. how you define it, how others define it, how then you turn to the you know the world view uh, that says the group conscious about how it's defined, and how it was used. Then you look up definitions, and that's really what's going to give you tell you how you know it personally, and then how you could know it if you decide to heal unlearn, grow from where your definition is to, to a, um, a higher definition and you can actually heal a lot in your life. Go. So from Webster's, the mortification, local death of tissue in the animal body, necrosis and gangrene. Okay, so you talk about well skin. Done. Yeah, it, you, it is part of that protection is dying off. You can't uh, it no longer can it do its job. And you were talking about bruise and with the water and not being able to get life to that part of the skin. Yeah, very good, very good. So emotions that are repressed end up being, um, show up somewhere. I remember being a kid, I had nothing but bruises. My mother could not understand, what did you do now? Eating I bananas. don't know. I would have bruises all over. I would fall and shouldn't be hurt. I'd have a bruise. My mother go, my mother would like, God, I gotta beat you. You know, and at that point, there was no abuse in the home. But I'd go to school, I'd, I'd do anything, you know, be a rough tumbler. Visit, visit alone. I would just have bruises on my body. Okay. Okay. Next. Um, yeah, From, next one. Uh, Dictionary.com, noun number one. A feeling of humiliation or shame as though some injury to one's pride or self-respect. Exactly. Um, the biggest one is when children first discover that they have a sexual part. They have no idea in the adult version of what those private parts mean. They are learning to express, learning to find themselves, uh, or learning to just be. 
Right, and, and we ha we're the one with all the definitions that when they start doing stuff, it's like, ah, don't do that, ah. And, and then, told that it's sinful, bad. Well, or like, you know, little kids walking around naked, oh, look what they're doing, ah, ah, you know, so, so it's like, you you know, ten adults in a room are going to have ten different reactions to the little kid doing But the something. one that you love the most, it's not about love the most, it's the one that you're focused on at the time that you want their love. Right, and however they react is going to tell you how you're supposed to feel, uh, if even if it's that or some other issue that's going on in your life. Because you're going to focus on the one that takes away probably the energy of love first, just simply because um, you notice when you're not whole. Love, when it is in the essence of support, is completely whole, and you can feel and love and grow, but it's usually when the love, when the energy is leaving us, that it comes up of getting our attention and saying, wait a minute, and then you'll focus on where the love is lost. Um, okay, so a cause or source of such humiliation or shame, which we just talked about, mm -hmm. and then this one I think is what we're talking about, uh, the practice of asceticism by uh, penitential discipline to overcome desire for sin and to strengthen the will. So that's what ah. we were talking about, the sin of the flesh earlier, and the, exactly. the religious practice. But that, see, that's the thing. We To overcome desire for sin. and But then, also to strengthen the will. So that's interesting. So to strengthen the will. Well, So is that, of, is that part of the paradox that's inside the contrary? Apparently, yeah, to some degree it was, I think. I'm supposed to strengthen my will, but I'm supposed to, you know... Have well, you're supposed, to be, you're supposed to be a young adult. You're supposed to have to learn to grow. Part of that will is that they bend it. They break it. Um, you, you break a spirit of a horse. You, you have my daughter has the most strongest will in the world, but I'm not going to sit there and break it through humiliation, shame, or I'm not going to mortify her just so that she'll behave like a, how a way I want her to. And that's how I was. Mm -hmm. I like the fact that my daughter has a strong will so that she doesn't have to be controlled by people. But at the same time, she has to learn, and that's why she chose me, was that. She needs to heal why she has to have such a strong will, which sabotages her, makes her miss opportunities, and ruins relationships. So um, she's finally come to me and said, okay, you know, I, I think that I need to look at this. And now she's healed a big chunk of herself, and she's an amazing kid. Jen and I have watched her um, change in the last month or two, mm -hmm. just really fast, because she's choosing to use healing tools. We just learned about cryptozoology. Mm -hmm. And it's the study of uh, the, all the paranormal stuff that's out there, all the unexplained things like <coughs> Bigfoot, Loch Ness. Oh my gosh, she all loves that stuff. So, that so stuff. yeah, and so the investigation of it. Yeah, and and so I wondered what she was going to do. You know, I know she's got the gifts. She had shut them off for the longest time, and now she's like, all right, maybe I should look at these. And I said yes, and I says, what is your passion? And we just learned about the word yesterday, and she says, I may become that. Who knows? because she will well, watch TV that are based just on those simple things. Mm -hmm. Because without you knowing it, you are guiding yourself in the area that who you really are in the first place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so anyways. And then pathology, again, the death of one part of the body while the rest is alive. Gangrene, oh my God. Listen to how that was said. We learn to deaden ourselves just so that other, others can thrive. Um, we can't take our and whole self part of to the, the table. The strengthening of the will. If we have a strong will, what we were just talking about, part of us is the rest of it um, will die. Well, what was I looking at? What, my sensitivity. If I want to be this sensitive person, um, which is what, your whole self, which is my whole self, and to be that, be a strong, vulnerable person um, who's sensitive, who can go out in the world and experience all of life. And be okay with being sensitive. What has to come apart, what has to break off, is this tough exterior. The part that was able to thrive in the desert. It and, worked for and, you then, man. And it worked, and it kept me alive, and I was able to survive in situations that I may not have been able to survive had I been this sensitive person. I did have to put on that thick skin. Now it's time, and it's, I have to take part of that reptile part off. Think about that. Thick skin means that you have to create more of it, which means you have to replicate your cells. And if you think about skin issues like eczema, psoriasis, that is a rapid growth of skin tissue. It's, um, it's, creating, it's, it's overworking itself to the point where it has to slough off 
and be irritated in that area because you are rapidly creating more cells in that area than you need. So you have to put on your, like you said, a reptile, you have to put on that armor mm -hmm. in order to survive. And we can look through many experiences where you had to, be only because you weren't sure how to process it. Now let's take your high school years, apply it to when you were little, and you had somebody that was your age or your peer <coughs> that allowed you to not be you. Okay, mm -hmm. you have to uh, be in the same space. You have to do certain things that are similar. Like, like if you go to high school, you have all the, almost all the same classes. You have to, you have to be this. And at the same time, you're not supposed to exist because someone told you, no, mine. And so, you, in order to survive, you didn't know how to process it, so you didn't learn how to process it. Again, no, we're not blaming anybody. That's a part of what our soul's journey was. So then, what you ended up doing was simply, okay, how is everybody else doing it? All right, I will become this. So you have to become and be something you didn't want to be. But then in that process, you realized, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to start doing a little bit of things I know I enjoy. Um, that's going to give me that feeling of safety. And you, like you said, you had, to, you had that tough armor. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now you're at the stage where you need to upgrade. Right, it's really not going to serve me. Like I, re I still remember those conversations in high school when I'd ask my parents, okay, if I get in a fight at school... What are the rules? Like, how will I get in trouble if I get into this fight? And they're like, why are you asking this? I'm like, because I have to go through this every day. I have to know if I have to fight or not. And so my stepdad said, okay, if you're in that environment, don't throw the first punch. That's what I learned, too. <coughs> you can defend yourself. I don't want to hear that you threw the first punch. If you're defending yourself, you have every right to do that. And if you get in trouble, then you get in trouble. But I know that you didn't throw the first punch. So it's like I had to... <clears throat> That's interesting. We're both having the same thing. But I had to learn how to do that. That's part of the thriving. It's like I had to learn... I, In order to go to school and face school every day, I had to know what the rules are as far as fighting. But what's interesting, what you just said was, is that we're not able just to be us. We have to be vulnerable in a way that, that because we know we're already going to get picked on, we can't stop that process. So we have to wait till we get beat upon, hurt, before we can actually respond. We have to take turns. We have to wait until we're beaten down. Well, I can't we just can go and, like, punch somebody <clears throat> in the face. That's not what I'm saying. Oh. What I'm saying is, is that's what we want to do with it because we don't know how to process the emotion, is to punch first. Yeah. Okay? I can't remember what it was on. I don't know why they're going to have me say this because I don't remember what it is. So why are they going to have me do this? On Facebook, somebody says, um, there's more, more people alive today just because I... I <clears throat> you know which one I'm talking about? You better thank me because... <laughs> no, I can't remember what <coughs> I didn't go... I'm not in prison. Oh, yeah. There's one... Oh, man. It's... it's uh, Because I, d I chose not to kill somebody, then there's more people alive because I chose not to kill them. Because I, I ain't willing to go into prison. Because I'm you. not... Oh, that's right. I'm not willing to go to prison, so you should be thankful that I'm not willing to go to prison, and that means that you're alive, so you should be thankful. <laughs> and... But listen to the process. <coughs> We're not to... Be us, stand up for who we are, be ourselves. So that means we'll never be able to be our whole selves in a situation where the energy is stronger than us. And if we're in that situation where the energy is stronger than us, we have to wait, wait, wait until we get beaten first before we can actually respond. To respond. So that means we are taught that we have to suffer first before we can actually uh, do anything about it. I think that needs to be healed because, good Lord, that... Oh my God! No, I don't want to do that anymore. Not well, like, not like I put myself in that position, but really look at how that child has to take the beating first, and then it can say, "I'm doing the right thing. I get to kick your butt now." Well, how about if we heal it so we don't create that uh, energy to be overlording on us? You know what I mean? Yes. Okay. Ha -ha. So, um, I say that a lot, and I think it's their transition of words about where to take me next. And I think what we need to do is understand that this is Monday, correct? And yes. what we're going to do is, I feel like a reading is in order for the general uh, day, or the, yeah, I'm not going to say week yet because they're going to have me do that, but the general reading for the day.